Hey everyone, welcome back to the chess yard. This is Dhera Bagga and today I'll be playing the Feinberg Blitz on Lee Chess. And during the game, I'll try to be as instructive as possible, like always, making sure that there's something to be taken away from the game and that helps you improve your game further. Now, before we start off with the game, I would request you to subscribe to my channel and press on to the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any of the videos that I'm posting up daily. So yeah, let's start off with the game and see what pieces we get. We've got the white pieces. We'll play the London system setup. It starts off at d4. Uh, bishop to f4. Pawn e3. Now this setup you can play against any kind of an opening. You don't have to think much. And then probably you can, if the opponent has placed a bishop, you can just offer him bishop exchange. And if he doesn't, then just continue to develop your pieces. Okay, he castles. We can play pawn c3 here. Can we exchange the bishop or let's wait for it? Probably I should go ahead with a4 here. The idea is to push the pawns forward towards the king side. Just bring back the bishop. So here he will continue to attack and push my pieces backwards. Just need to make space for my dark square bishop here. Or you can play here the move g4 as well. That opens up the position. Not sure how useful that would be. So, yep, he decides to close. And we'll bring back the bishop on h2. It will always eye towards the king side. So, a very nicely placed piece. Now, probably, I think we can even push the pawn forward or play the move uh, queen to c c2 here. Let's play the queen, forcing him to exchange now. So he has to. Now he can take back. He pushes the pawns forward. I can just take it back. Yep, I should take it. Takes with the queen. Now threatening on to take g2. Which we can save by moving the rook. Simple. Pushes the pawn forward. I can take. But then the knight is hanging. Okay. Can I just play the move knight to d2? That defends the knight. Now if he takes, that's okay. We'll just... Remove the bishop from here. Is the bishop going to be trapped there? Yeah, maybe. So we'll keep it here. If I place it on f4, then probably gives him space to move his pieces. Yep, that's what he's trying to do. I think we can take on. We have to take on actually. Otherwise, it can be a mess. I need to remove one of my pieces from here. How about knight on h2? That def that attacks the queen as well. So this attacks the queen. I can take on the pawn if required. I can castle after the queen moves. The queen gets active. Maybe I some check someday or just go from the other side of the board. Lots of things that can be done. He's a pawn up. We have to, but this this pawn has to be controlled here. That's important. That should not be a problem, I believe. And he gets his queen on the same diagonal, forcing some attack on the knight, but he won't be giving away his queen for that. Probably now queen can hop in here on the g6 yep let's take the queen on g6 some point of time we can exchange the queens 
if he takes. Of course, I can take back with the knight in that case. He plays the bishop. And I think here I should castle. Making sure my rooks are connected and I'm attacking the center as well. He tries to tank the queen now. Can I just go back or exchange the queens? Exchanging queens is a good option, I believe. Now he takes, I take back. Threatening to take on the pawn now. The knight is also very good. Can take on a pawn here as well. Couple of pieces lacking it. Okay. Can take with the bishop here. Attacking the rook as well. So he takes with the knight. I take back. Knight has a very good square. Next move. A triple fork can happen. Or at least two of them should be forked. If he doesn't save it. That's what happens. He has to give one of the pieces here. He's trying to hang on to the pawn. That's not bad actually. But let's see how long he can do that. Let's take. Probably now knight on f3. Pawns are equal in the game now at least. Uh, I can take on the knight. Or I should not. Probably I should, otherwise it can be a problem again. Now take on the center pawn, maybe. Ah, uh, no, he's just going to give a place his rook here now, maybe. Uh, I should just move my king up, upwards. That's the best thing for the time being. Now we can give a check. Always helpful. I have to come back. No other option there. Okay, let's save the pawn. I have to take my king there. On the other side of the board. That's what we do. Probably now pawn up. No, he defends it. Losing out on time. From now, I can play the pawn. And go here. Takes. Takes. That's a good situation to be in, but nah, time is the critical part here. Check. Check. Take the rope. And he resigns because a pawn army is going to come and then just promote the queen. And that both the pawns are pretty strong here and king is also there. So definitely these the three pawns are helpless here. They cannot be promoted anytime soon. So he resigns. A perfect game, I would say. Uh, was a pawn down in between, but then managed to pull it back. And that was pretty solid at the end. Let's start off with the game. Uh, analysis once. Let's see what... Computer lines were there. I played d4. He responds with d5, then bishop to f4. And he plays the light square bishop here uh, on f5, which is generally not the case uh, when you are playing against most opponents. I continued my development uh, as typical in the London system. Not really willing uh, to go for exchange too early. Just trying to make sure my pieces are better equipped. 
uh, here, yeah, this move, I was thinking probably here I can, so ideally uh, the knight has to go on d2, but because his bishop was standing there, I couldn't develop my knight. Uh, also, because he has castled on the queen side, I thought of attacking from the queen side. Generally, uh, when you're playing the London system, your idea is to just get your queen on uh, c2 and probably attack the king side. Uh, but here, he, as he has castled already, so I just wanted to push on the a pawn. Uh, then he tries to push my bishop back. I go back on g3. And he plays h5. He's going for the pawn attack on the king side. Uh, meanwhile, I'm trying to attack somehow on the queen side. But here I had to defend first. Uh, because if I don't defend this, uh, the bishop is being trapped in the next move if he plays h5, h4. So the bishop has to be uh, have a good retrieval square. which I, That's why I played... The move h3 here, he pushes the pawn forward to h4 and I bring back on h2. Now the bishop is pretty secure here, nothing to be worried about. And he continues to develop his pieces, uh, still his knight is there. The bishop was also just uh, moved now. And I now bring my queen to c2 with the idea that he has to exchange, which he does. I take back with the queen. And he pushes on the pawn uh, on the g file. I take, he takes back with the queen. His queen is pretty active here. And we have to defend the g2 pawn as well. That's what I do with the rook. He pushes the pawn forward. And what is computer suggesting here? To play queen to f1. Now that's a very strange move, I would say. Uh, taking a queen on the last rank, and it's pretty much inactive there. Uh, I played the knight, uh, making sure that. At least my piece had developed and I can castle any point of time, which computer says is a bad move. Uh, let's understand why. So I played pawn there. I placed my bishop there. What was the follow-up that I should be aware of? He's doing the perfect moves there. So I think he missed something in the between. Um, I take, he takes back. Knight attacks the queen. He goes on the perfect square. How is he playing all the perfect moves? That's amazing. So he was in complete control of the game, I would say. Uh, from move number 15 at least to 18 for so far. Yep, queen finds the exact right square with it had to. He saves the bishop and yep, computer setting now exchange the queens. So probably he had a very good move here, which was rook over here. But then also I think uh, my plan would have been just to exchange the queens maybe. And oh, he can deny queen exchange is what computer is saying. So yep, that could have been... Uh, a game changer there um, and if i take queen backwards of course he can save with the rook as well or the knight if he brings the rook then of course i can take back the queen and he will we can just do repetition there but no point he can just since he's strong he is pawn up and his pawn is very good on g2 he can afford to just bring back the knight and not go for the draw and after I come back, the only option I have remaining is to just exchange the queen somehow. And that's not possible if we place the knight to h6. So that was a threat, uh, which probably he uh, missed doing it. And we just I just castled first. Uh, he tries to kick away the queen from there. And I offered him queen exchange. Not offer, actually, it's a forced queen exchange. So he has to. After he takes, I take back with the knight, and now I start to take control of the game better. Uh, he brings in the knight, offering a free pawn uh, in the center. Okay, so I could, I should have taken the g pawn first. Okay, uh, but I went with uh, the other pawn. The idea being, uh, I attack the rook as well, and I thought that this pawn can be taken on later as well. It's pretty much weak uh, remaining over there. He takes, I take back with the knight, and I, as I mentioned the game, it's a very nice fork about to happen if he doesn't save it. It's a three-way uh, fork on both the rooks as well as the bishop. And only uh, way to save it was probably move just one piece there, which he moves uh, rook, uh, the d-rook to g8. I went on with the fork and took on the bishop eventually because the dark square bishop can uh, be very... Uh, helpful in the end game for my opponent um, because this is going to be an end game so i just take on the bishop he takes back and now we are equal in uh, pieces i would say five pawns with him five with me and yep he has a couple of rooks same here and knight 
uh, it's a good it's going to be a good end game here um, one thing i missed over here was uh, probably moving the king f uh, earlier uh, but that was okay so far ideally i should have um, got my king uh, very quickly to e2 and then probably try to move the pawn forward and take on the pawn eventually uh, here he offers knight exchange um, and that was okay to me because the point is if uh, if i don't take it here and move somewhere else suppose the center file uh he can probably just keep pushing my knight away and there's no such good square remaining and thereafter the knight gets to uh, the f3 which attacks the rook and i'm simply losing here there's no way i can defend this position uh so let's go back to the game where uh i exchange the knight and he takes back with the rook and he loses the center pawn but my concern was bigger there uh, i wanted to just make sure that i am not losing out uh, an exchange in the last rank so probably the threat i was wondering was if he gets the rook on the back rank and then we go for exchange i take he takes back and then it's kind of a end game itself uh, which white should be comfortable with uh, i played king to c2 here he brings king on in the center uh, to d7 so I can definitely take, which I do. Now I get going ahead uh, and I'm a pawn up now. Just got the rook back and played a b3 here, making sure my a pawn is defended and then just tried moving towards the center. As you can see now white is more in control and st slightly ahead in the evaluation bar as well. Uh, and then he just plays rook on h3, I play uh, c4 here the idea is controlling uh, the pawns uh, in a right way uh, when, whenever you create a triangle in such a way then probably you will always control everything um, this triangle is pretty good uh, and then i play the move uh, f3 the idea is very simple that you can just go towards the pawn and gobble it eventually which he sees then and tries to exchange everything in the process he loses another pawn now we are two pawns ahead and these are connected pawns to be more uh they are more active than than being isolated so these are this is completely winning position it was just about time from here and probably he helped me out with the time as well i just played h5 giving a check uh, he had a couple of squares to go back to but he went to uh, d6 and that helped in faster uh, exchanging of the rooks and that's what all it was required i gave a check and he has to move backwards now and i take on the rook yes of course i can take on another pawn here but that was not the intent i just wanted to win it from there very quickly so i just took it and he resigns because now these two pawns will just continue and uh, be eventually promoted to queen and they cannot be stopped of course i have a king as well which can help so that's completely winning position i hope you like the video uh, and there was something to be learned from it just try to resist to the attack whenever you are facing an attack like i was in this game the g pawn was pretty much uh, very aggressive on g2 can any time be promoted if you do a mistake but the way i handled it uh, was pretty nice i believe and eventually i had extra pawns and i won this game so just try to hang into the position and keep keep growing and improving your game further thank you so much for your time do subscribe to my channel press on the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any of the videos all right see you next time take care bye bye